Tom Cruise tries to kill himself, Jump of Reckoning Part 1, aka Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, is directed by Christopher McQuarrie. It stars Tom Cruise, Hayley Atwell, Ving Rhames, Simon Pegg and Rebecca Ferguson. And in the 7th installment of the popular action franchise, Ethan Hunt and his IMF team track down a dangerous weapon that could destroy humanity should it fall into the wrong hands. Now if you're an action fan, you probably love Mission Impossible, I certainly do especially Ghost Protocol and Upwards. I, I love these films so much. The action in them is fantastic. They all have the moments, memorable moments. They they're just such good movies that you can just sit back and enjoy and be entertained by. And of course, I was very, very excited to see this film. I I've been waiting for this film for a long time. I, I saw it was a part one, which made me a bit nervous. I am a bit wary of two part of films, but... We'll see how it went. I'm happy to say that Dead Reckoning Part 1 is an absolutely great film. It's not my favourite Mission Impossible film, but it certainly is absolutely fantastic. Now, there are so many stakes and so much tension in every scene in this film. The whole plot revolves around this AI algorithm that can pretty much do everything. It can control data, hack into any system, and loads of countries want to control it. And it's dangerous. If a country controls it, they could bring other countries down to their knees. They could probably win a war easily. They could process information in ways that they want to. It's very dangerous and it, it could ruin society. But there's also even more added tension with the main villain. If he gets it, he could control the world. And if the AI goes rogue and starts to gain an understanding, it, it could set off nuclear warheads, whatever. So there is tension in every scene. The stakes could not be higher. But even with all these states and tension, the movie never forgets its characters. Ethan Hunt is still the same guy that he was in the other films. He's an agent that really doesn't like to kill people. He cares about his friends. He's not this just big agent who just doesn't care for anyone really and uses women as tools. He's not James Bond. He, inside, he's an actual kind-hearted person that wants to protect his loved ones. He also is still that MI6 agent who is an agent but she still has that sense of likability because she really does care for Ethan and you can see a little bit of romance coming between them two as well which is something I've been really loving and of course you've still got Benji and Luther who still have their banter and they banter with Ethan as well uh, and those scenes are just really funny they're, they're always cute so every character has personality and you all care about them and we also have a new character with Grace played by Hayley Atwell she has a bit of an arc in this film. She starts off as a normal pickpocket hired by someone. Don't worry, I won't spoil it. But yeah, she's hired as a pickpocket. And over, and over time, she, because of certain situations, she's forced into this decision where you either run for your whole life or you join the IMF. Basically, the same decision that Ethan Hunt had to make. So I really like her arc. And it, it, it feels like it's going to pass the torch in the next film. We'll, we'll see, though. Maybe she'll just be another Ilsa. But... We will see in the next film, but I really did like that arc and development for her. But of course, I can't review a Mission Impossible film without mentioning the stunts and the action. Tom Cruise wants to make this a massive cinematic experience. And the things he does to make it that... Oh, honestly, th this guy is such an idiot when it comes to the stunts. We all know the motorcycle stunt that's been heavily advertised and promoted... And yeah, that, that's great in this film, especially on the big screen. Make sure you try and see this in IMAX because, wow, <laughs> the, the big screen experience of that, blooming amazing. And he does all these other crazy stunts as well, which I won't spoil because I really want you to see this with hardly any knowledge of what he does. But let's just say that you, you honestly feel like he could die, even though you know he's living. But, oh my word, the things he does... Tom, mate, you need to calm down. I, I know you want to make these films entertaining, but please. <laughs> the action is also choreographed and shot very well. There is this whole action scene in the tightest alleyway I have ever seen. And it was choreographed and shot brilliantly. And it was so scary for me, at least, because it hit into a phobia of mine. I'm very claustrophobic. I, I don't like tight spaces. So, so that was awful. If, if I was in that situation... Yeah, I'd be in a panic attack in an instant. <laughs> There's also this whole action scene on a train and on top of a train as well. And that was just so well done as well. The choreography, the way it was shot, the tension was all there. 
it, it was absolutely flawless, the action and stunt. I also have to give massive credit to actors such as Hayley Atwell, because their choreography was perfection. The, the punches and kicks that they produced felt real. Uh, it's clear that everyone put a lot of effort into those action scenes, and I have to praise them 100%. The whole film is shot and directed really well. The use of Dutch angles is very well done. It's a little callback to the first Mission Impossible, but it's also there to increase fear and tension throughout the film. And the editing, especially in the action scenes, was done very well. It's very fast paced, but not in a way where it's jarring and you can't tell what's happening on screen. It's caught just at the right time to make the action scenes feel way quicker than what they are. And that's another thing. This movie is paced brilliantly. It's two and three quarter hours long. I honestly felt I was there for like two hours. That was it. That This film just blown by. And I, it's mainly the action scenes that do that because they're so quick. And they just keep going and keep going and keep going. But it just feels like you're there for two hours, not longer. And this movie also hosts some flawless performances. Tom Cruise, of course, is great as Ethan Hunt. His chemistry with people like Simon Pegg, Ving Rains, and Rebecca Ferguson it is off the charts. They, they just all work so well together. And they all produce amazing performances. Hayley Atwell's Grace was also fantastic too. Again, chemistry with the other actors was there in an instant. It's off the charts. She produced a great performance. But two other standout performances were Isaiah Morales, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, and Pom Clementief, who played the villains. They both brought a more menacing edge to their villains, making them feel like more of a threat. And you actually are a bit scared that they will that they will win because they, they are pure evil. And that's thanks to their performances mainly. And finally, I do have to say that on narrative terms, for a part one, this story ends on a satisfying note. Of course, you still want to see what happens in the next film. There's still many more loose ends, but the way it ends is satisfying. There's a sense of finality to it, which is very strange for a part one film. So uh, I feel you will be satisfied by the ending. You're not going to be like, oh, oh, I've got to wait a year now for, for the next film, which is what I felt like with Fast X. It's done really well, ends in the right place. And you still are excited to see what happens next. And the only flaw I really do have with this film is that th there was a few spotty CGI moments that didn't look that great. And then that's it. That That's all the flaws I have with this film. It's only slight nitpicks I have. The Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 was absolutely perfect. It is a film that's meant to be in the cinema, seen on the biggest screen with the best sound systems. Please, I, I beg of you, see this in cinemas when you can. It has great new and old characters, deft to find stunts, well choreographed action, brilliant editing, brilliant pacing, amazing music of course. That's one thing I forgot to praise, the, the brilliant Mission Impossible soundtrack. An ending that's satisfying. It's got pretty much everything you want from one of these films. Tom Cruise, Christopher McQuarrie, you've done it again. I absolutely love this film and I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. One of the best films of the year, one of the best films in the franchise. Absolutely fantastic. And guys, that is it for the end of this review. I hope you all enjoyed. I don't really know what my next video is going to be. I've got a few ideas, especially one that I want to do, but we will see next week. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you have seen Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, let me know what you thought of it in the comments. Have a good day. See you later.